Hi guys, uh, welcome to our Weighted Averages webinar. Now this is one of my favorite topics, I would say, because it just makes my life so simple. It helps me solve many, many questions. There are questions in which, let's say even the word averages may not be mentioned. Even those questions become extremely simple in case I'm able to use weighted averages in that. And uh, in fact, with the coming of data insights, it has become even more essential because the century of weighted averages helps us solve questions very quickly, right? I'm sure you know that formula, that W1 by W2 formula, or you also know the scale method where you just draw a line and you, know, you put the values and you get the average. It doesn't take time to do those things. But uh, in case you were to do it, let's say algebraically, it would take a whole lot more. Yeah, You can visualize using weighted averages. And that is why your calculations are reduced a whole lot. So, um, and as I said, with the coming of data insights, this has become even more essential because uh, anyway, we fall short on time and data insights. So I am quite certain that you know the basics of weighted averages. Um, I'm sure that you would have gone through the module or even the YouTube video, whatever. So I'm not going to take the, you know, formula, et cetera. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping that you do know that, um, you know, this is one question that I do get quite often. How do you decide which one is W1, which one is W2? So I have taken care of it in the model as well. I've explained it. And in case you've missed that, let me just let, uh, you know, tell you that it doesn't matter, right? W1 and W2, either quantity could be W1, either could be W2. The only thing you have to keep in mind is that the quantity that is a1 is also W1, right? That consistency should be there. So there are two quantities. So A1 and W1 is one and A2 and W2 are the other. So you can't mix that up. Otherwise, you can take any one to be W1 and any uh, one to be W2. Usually, I take the one which is which appears first as A1, W1, so that there's no confusion. Or, you know, sometimes uh, the one which is smaller because when I put it on the number line, when I use the scale method, it is more natural to have the smaller quantity on the left, right? That's how our number line goes from, you know, on the left hand side of the smaller numbers. So because it's more natural like that, so then I put the smaller number on the left and then I call that W1 and A1, doesn't matter. Uh, also, I hope you have read through how to find what are the weights in a weighted average question. Again, that is an essential point, right? It's not just like whatever is given to us, we're going to take that as weights. We have to ensure that they actually are going to be weights in our calculation. So again, that has been discussed. In fact, we'll take a look at a question also. So today, uh, my main aim in this webinar is going to um, be to, you know, give you some indications tell you you know how to figure out whether you can use weighted averages in a question so essentially the questions we'll take today um you know it may not be really apparent to you that you should be using weighted averages there but we'll discuss how you can figure out how you know what what kind of indicators are going to be there what should make you think okay can i use weighted averages over here and can i you know, um, you know, solve it much faster. So, of course, it is a skill that is built with time, but of course, we can hasten the process as well. You know, uh, uh, once I tell you what to look out for, perhaps next time you see a question like that, it will come to your mind and then you'll be able to solve it faster, right? So, um, I'll share my screen with you and we'll, um, you know, I'll give you a couple of minutes to try and solve the question on your Before we begin, let me just talk about I hope you've gone through mixtures, right? So I'll talk a little about mixtures. What happens in mixtures that we have, you know, one thing, one solution, whatever. We add another solution to it and then we get a final solution, right? This is what our mixtures is. So we say, okay, there's some concentration over here, some, let's say it's a milk and water solution. So some 20% you know, here, 50% here, and then together, of course, when we're adding them together, we will get something in between 20 and 50, right? Or so some percentage of the final solution and that's it. Now, you know, sometimes there are questions which go the other way around and you should think about mixtures and weighted averages in those questions as well. So what I mean by that is that you might have this final solution and that might get split into two solutions. Like, for example, when you have that there is a, some, let's say, 80%, um, you know, solution, milk, salt solution or milk solution or something, and then it is heated, and then the water evaporates, and then you are left with, for example, 90% solution, right? So then 
you know, how much of the water evaporated. Look, what is happening over there is that here you have the, for example, the 80% solution. Let's say milk and water only, right? You have the 80% solution. This is getting split into two. One, which is pure water, which is 100% water, or I can say this is 0% milk solution. And then the other, which is, let's say, 90% milk solution, right? Because if water is evaporating, then you're going to be left with a higher quantity of the solute. So whatever this may be, you know, a salt or et cetera, a lot of whatever it can be. So had I mixed this water with the 90% milk solution, I could have gotten 80% milk solution, right? This is my normal uh, mixtures. What is happening over here is just the reverse of it, but my formula, my application, everything stays the same. It doesn't matter. I could go in the reverse order also, but still, you know, my, my W1 by W2 and everything is going to remain the same. Whether I perform the action of mixing two things and making a final solution, or I perform the action of taking a final solution and separating it into two things, it doesn't matter. Essentially, they are the same. Mathematically, they're exactly the same. So look at here. So we're doing something like this over here. Now at a gym with 600 members, the weight of 90% members is more than 150. Pounds. Um, so there are 90% members with a lot of weight, with more weight, more than 150 pounds. How many of these heavy weight members should leave the gym so that only 60% members are more than 150 pounds? Look, when I look at this question, it makes me think of breaking a group into two. Right, So I have this group, which is the 90% members. I break it into two. I One, I, I pick up the heavyweight members, right? Or, you know, in this group, I have all the heavy, because how many of these heavyweight members should leave the gym? So there is this group of heavyweight members, which I say are 100% heavyweight members, one group, right? And the other one that I'm left with is what? 60% heavyweight members in the other group. Now think about it. If these people that left the gym and these people that were remaining in the gym, if I put them together, what will I get? I'll get today's uh, gym membership, right? The 90% members that are more than 150 pounds, isn't it? So essentially, I have taken one group and split it into two. It's still exactly the same. It's still our same mixtures, same weighted averages, yeah? Okay, so then how will I solve it? It's quite simple. I have my scale. I'll say, okay, 60% uh, people here, like this group has 60% heavyweight members. This group has 100% heavyweight members. And I know my average is 90%. Yeah, so then I know how to solve in my scale, right? This is 30 and this is 10. If I have a ratio of 3 is to 1, then my weights become in the ratio of 1 is to 3. Right? So the number of people over here in 60% is going to be 1 is to the number of people here are going to be 3. Now, in the average, in the total, how many people do I have? I have 600 people. These are the ones that I broke into two groups uh, in the ratio of 1 is to 3. Right. So then these will be how many? 150 and these will be how many? 450. Right. So then if 450 members leave, 450 heavyweight members leave, then we are going to be left with 150 members out of whom 60% are going to be heavyweight. So our answer is, uh, questions is how, how many of these heavyweight members should leave, right? So, so then the answer is 450, right? Do you see that? It's a, it's, you're not mixing the two groups together. You are separating them, but then it is still a mixtures question. Mathematic, mathematically, it is just the same, right? Um, where? No, no. So uh, we have 600 members. The weight of 90% of these, look, the weight is 600, right? Um, if, when I'm using the, when I'm using 90% members, I'm saying that out of these 600 members, 
uh, my you know members who are heavyweight they are the ones who are 540 but then the overall solution the overall mixture is 600 member right like okay think about it how do we do in our um alcohol uh, water questions yeah okay so guys we have a question yep so just we have a question where um uh, you know a learner is wondering that why aren't we using 540 over here why are we using 600 over here look go back to our let's say a, a simple mixtures question what do we have i say if i have 10 liters of 10 liters of 20 percent milk solution and if i say i have 20 liters of um 50 percent milk solution and i have to find their uh, uh, uh um the average right what do i do so i have 20 percent over here i have 50 percent over here i say there is 10 liters of this solution I say I'm mixing with 20 liters of this solution and then I'm going to split this in the ratio of 2 is to 1, right? This is 30, so then I'm going to get 40% over here. And how much will be the volume of this? Because I'm mixing 10 liters of this and 20 liters of this. I'm, I say I get 40% of 30 liters of solution, right? What is my weight? My weight is the total volume of the solution. I'm saying 20% of that is milk, for example. 50% of that is milk. But then my weight is what? The, the total 10 liter, the total 30 liter, the total 20 liter, right? It's not 20% of the 10 liter. I'm not using 2 liters over here, right? I'm saying that this is 20% of, of the total solution, of the total 10 liters, right? When I say that I have this group of 60% people who are heavyweight, I'm going to talk about the entire group. My weight is the entire group. And then when I say this is anyway 100%, right? When I get 90%, 90% of the entire group is the heavyweight. So then I have to take the entire group. I have 600 people that entire volume of this solution where I have 90% overweight people. Think about that, right? This, the entire volume of this particular solution is 600 people, right? It's not 540, is the, just the number of heavyweight people. I don't have to take that. I am talking about 90% of 600. That is equal to 540, right? If I say that these are 540, the members over here are 540, that is not accurate, right? Members over here in this group where 90% are heavyweight in this entire group are 600. So I have to use 600 over here, right? Not 540. Does that make sense? Um, of course, you can so look, weighted averages formula and the scale method are exactly the same thing, right? You can just join the two together. Scale method is it, it's just you know, it, it shows you how to do it by drawing a small diagram. But otherwise, you can use the exact same formula. It is the same formula that is used over here also. Look, uh, you know, when I say your weighted averages is, let's say, W1 upon W2, that is equal to, I say, A2 minus A average upon A average minus A1. Look at this. This is my A2. This is my A average. And this is my A1. What am I doing? A2 minus A average. And A average minus A1. I'm saying that the weights over here are inverse of that. So that is why W1 upon W2 are the weights. W1 is here and W2 is here. W1 by W2 is this part upon this part. And that's pretty much what the scale method is also now. Right? I can certainly use the same formula also exactly to do the same thing. Does that make sense? Right? I say that my 60% members and my 100% members, all, all these heavyweight members, right? My 60% is A1, my 100% is A2, my average is 90%. Right? When I say 100 minus 90 upon 90 minus 60, what do I get? I get 1 upon 3. So I say that these 600 are split in the ratio 1 by 3, which means 150 and 450. Of course, exactly the same thing that I got with my scale as well. Right? Does that make sense? Hmm. 
do you understand what is the denominator? What is the weight? You know, when I talk about, for example, when I talk about concentration, I'm saying when I, I'm, I'm saying 20% milk, 40% milk, 50% milk, right? So my concentration, I'm saying I'm averaging my concentration. This is what I'm averaging. So what is the weight going to be? Concentration, what is the meaning of concentration? 20% of, of what? Of the volume, right? Of the total volume of the, of the uh, solution that I'm talking about. I'm, I'm using what? I'm using volume of the total solution, right? Of the total solution. When I say that there's a percentage change and something increases by, let's say, 10%, what is my weight? I say that this 10 has increased on the base, whatever my base is, the 100, which is the total previous value. This has gone up by 10%, right? So my, my weight is the is this previous total value, right? It is not, I mean, I'm talking about 10% of that. So then I have to take the total previous value. Does that make sense? Thank you.